right then. Well, hi everyone. Thank you very much for watching or listening today. Today I have a very, very special guest who I've actually been excited to interview for a long time. Polly James, one of Wales' most recognisable presenters and radio hosts, if not the most recognisable. Uh, obviously best known for presenting the Capital South Wales Breakfast Show with Matt Lissette for six years. Um, Ozzy began her career at Afan FM in Port Talbot, followed by a stint on national radio in London. Now she's back in Cardiff presenting for Radio X. She interviewed a who's who list of uh, well-known celebrities from Anthony Joshua, Tyson Fury, um, Big Z, obviously world's strongest man, Jesse J, Tom Jones. I hear there's a story behind that one and quite <laughs> a few others. So uh, today we'll be talking about Polly's life and her career and quite a few different aspects. So um, I just want to say, Polly, obviously, thank you for coming on. Thank you for making the time. Oh, thank you so much. And for that flavoursome introduction, it was lovely. Um, yeah, you, you've done your research, but no, it's less that we could uh, find some time together to chat because we always see each other at events, don't we? And uh, it's always very brief or you've got to run off and do something, then I've got to run off and do something. So yeah, it's nice to sit down and catch up. Yeah, 100%. It's nice to have a proper chat. Absolutely. So we've got some brilliant things to talk about today that I'm excited to get into. There's quite a few, but I want to start with something at the beginning, as soon as you mentioned events, and obviously I've seen you interview all these different people, and you have a very relaxed, very sort of down to earth interview style, which I think makes people feel very welcome, very at home. That's certainly the vibe I get. Do you think that growing up around Cardiff, growing up around Wales, uh, and obviously our Welsh uh, warmth, as, as people in England always tell me, um, do you think that's influenced your, your interview style in the sense that you're so relaxed talking to people from all walks of life? Um, do you know, I never thought of it really. And a lot of people do. And it's a lovely compliment. They always say, oh, you know, you're really relaxed and you're quite natural the way you sort of interview and stuff. And I, I guess, you know, yeah, I guess that is a big influence sort of growing up in Cardiff and it's just shaped me the person I am you know so you know being able to be a bit more natural and a bit more conversational with them and just you know be down to earth with them you know it's just sort of um you know at the end of the day they're humans aren't they I think us as Welsh people we're we're not too phased like we're just a bit like you know well they're, they're, they're just normal people like us and and that 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 grounds us then to be able to have a normal conversation with them and not be too starstruck even though i have been very starstruck but managed to keep it under control <laughs> okay brilliant obviously funny enough that was a question i had for later on but as soon as we yeah. touched on it oh, yeah do you ever i mean obviously you say you get starstruck with people tell us sort of how you manage that when you meet certain people or you know who you've been starstruck when you've met because obviously i know you've met so many incredible individuals from all walks of life so when you what situations have you been starstruck you know when you meet them let's walk through that a little bit well i mean you know you've been to some of the events that i've been hosting you know with some of the 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 people in cel celebrities or sports stars who i've considered to be you know some of the best in the world like um anthony joshua tyson fury i, I just feel so lucky and just honored to be able to chat to these guys and you know and to be honest i think my the the fear of when i meet them or not the fear or just you know when you get a bit starstruck when you meet them or obviously i've got a job to do and i've got to sit down and, and get the best out of them and i think for me it's not really feeling starstruck it's more i I get a bit nervous because I want to do my role the justice that it deserves. There's loads of people there who are real big fans of this, you know, person and they've paid lots of money to see him and maybe they've grown up watching them and they're you know a proper hero on the stage you know meters away from them and there i am i'm in this privileged position sitting next to them asking the questions i just want to do it justice you know so i think that's where the factor comes in and obviously the bigger the star the, the more nerves i get but you know i as, as i say you just want to do it justice but also as well you just want to have a fun time and just realize wow you are in that position let's just enjoy it and have fun and um you know try to take it all in your stride but you never really can to be honest so <laughs> yeah very much i relate to that process big time though even doing the, mm. talk with the media and and sometimes exactly. we can a double take and i totally relate to that and and the nerves as well you want yeah. to do a good job, everything but i think it's good you want to do a good job yeah go on go on carry on no, I, I was going to say, like, it's the same as your like photos. You could, you know, take some historical photos that could be used, you know, like when when is the next time that Anthony Joshua is going to be in Cardiff? You know, if he hasn't, if he doesn't fight here again, then I don't know. Like, when when is the next time he comes? And and you're you're the person getting those, you know, candid photos. It's like it it is important, isn't it? You know, and you feel like such pressure. But I mean, you're great at your job anyway. So. <laughs> 
Oh, well, thank you, Polly, and you're great at yours as well. Oh, but I think it's, <laughs> in many, many ways, but I think it's really good for people to see that because obviously I think a lot of people, you know, because you're very well known, put you on that sort of pedestal. And I think it's actually really good for people to get the feeling that, you know, you go through some of these things as well and the nerves and the preparation, oh, yeah. just these little things, you know, it's, it's a good insight. So obviously we're talking about the present day, going back in time. I know you've talked about this a little bit, but I think a lot of people would be interested to know how you actually got started in radio and presenting, interviewing and everything you do, because it's been a good few years. I think it's been, was it 12, 13 years, something like that. That you've yeah. been in the, um, the, the how, years what, rolling by. <laughs> but um, no, I started when I was around about 19 years old. And so I was doing promotion work. So I didn't really know. I didn't really have a direction in, in my life. I was just sort of going day by day, happy, go lucky. I was earning, you know, good money, um, working on the days that I wanted to work on, sort of working for myself, doing the promo stuff, you know, giving out, um, you know, the new Cadbury's chocolate bar and, and stuff like that, you know, little samples on the street. And that's kind of like what I did, working on like campaigns, on brand campaigns and stuff. And, um, you know, just as a freelancer. And then I moved up to London with my sister and, you know, thought we could take on the world. You know, she was like 22, I was 18. And, you know, we were all very excited. And then my mum said, oh, why don't you come back? There's a, uh, <laughs> there's a, she was reading the South Wales Echo and it was, um, a job for two, you know, two steady days a week, two regular days a week, doing a promotional job for um, for Red Dragon FM, which was my local radio station, yours as well, probably back in the day. Um, wow. But South Wales is hit music station, and it was working as a road runner. So I thought, yeah, two days a week. I went in, I got the job, which was awesome, and 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 I kind of it was like an epiphany moment. Really, I walked into the studio uh, or the building, and I was like, yeah. I, this is what I want to do. It was like something that clicked for me, you know, it was something that I had maybe been searching for um, hadn't really known, as I said, what I wanted to do with my life. And then sort of radio came into it very accidentally. And um, yeah, I just sort of fell head over heels in love with it, you know? So, and, and the rest is history. You know, I got into it quite late, I suppose, because a lot of people, you know, maybe have a, have a, a background of, of radio in their family perhaps or they start doing it in uni or but you know I got into it sort of a, a bit of a random way and yeah and I and I didn't look back I didn't pick up any bad habits I didn't have any preconceived ideas about it I just wanted to be on air uh, the music I loved obviously was a little bit more indie a little bit more rock but you know that that didn't phase me I just wanted to be on the radio and just talk and you know connect with an audience incredible yeah it's incredible to hear the story behind it because obviously I, i've heard that myself when i was researching this but it wasn't like a fan thing and i just love no. the story about it was almost like fate in a way you know and, and that is just it's just super cool to be honest it was it was fate and um i love how i just sort of accidentally just sort of fell into it i suppose and um run with it and i love radio now it's like it's in my blood i know it sounds really weird but like i just feel like without radio i, I wouldn't you know it's, it's what makes me tick as a person you know Incredible. Yeah, I think you truly found your call in there, Polly. Yeah. It's amazing. Um, and it's good, again, for people to get the insight into how it all started and, and everything like that. Now, obviously, we were talking about the interviews and these incredible people you've spoken to. And, you know, there's so many. But are there any that stand out as being maybe the best interviews or the ones you've enjoyed the most um, over time? Maybe there's one, maybe there's more than one. But could you walk us through that a little bit of, you know, what your personal favourite interviews have been so far out of all the incredible you, you know who You know who I'm going to say, Lee, come on. You know it's going to be Tyson Fury. I say it all the time. But, yeah. you know, truly, Tyson Fury was just like, I mean, anyone who's had the privilege of and, and honour of sort of sitting down with him and like, you know, actually sitting down with him and, and going through his life story, um, and, you know, sometimes you very rarely talk boxing with Tyson, you know, he, there's so many more layers to the guy, you know, he's obviously a, he's a father, he's a husband, he's a mental health advocate, he's a bloody comedian, he's funny, isn't he, you know, and he's just, he's just a lad, you know, he's just a lad who just, you know, is, is just, you know, living this crazy life and, you know, boxing comes in, you know, quite low down on on his priorities i think anyway you know when he you know you can tell when he talks about stuff and you know what what makes his eyes light up and and what makes him talk truly authentically about something and um 
you know, even though he's very passionate about boxing and stuff, but, you know, it's lovely to hear how he grew up and his family and how he talks about, you know, his children and, and obviously, you know, his, his battle with mental health and depression. But I, I was really lucky, actually. The first time I interviewed Tyson was um, at a bit of a crossroads in his, his life. He was actually suffering from really bad depression. Uh, he was talking about, you know, taking his life. He was, you know, gosh, maybe 10 stone overweight. Um, he was banned by the, the boxing board at that point. He didn't know whether he was going to come back. He was retiring, you know, even on that night I was interviewing him, he was retiring then coming back and calling out all these fighters. And, you know, he didn't even know what he was going to do. So we caught him at a real vulnerable, poignant time of his life. And, you know, he really opened up and it was just fun. It was fasc fascinating, you know. Um, and then obviously looking back on that now, you know, what, four years ago to see where he's come from is just phenomenal. And, you know, gosh, I'm, I'm so inspired by him. And obviously, you know, I, I wouldn't call him a friend, but I've had the pleasure of sitting down with him a number of times. So, um, yeah, and, and I get to do that again in the next two weeks. So, yeah, it's sort of a bit of a homecoming tour for him in the next two weeks. So, I, yeah, I, I always pinpoint Tyson because I always feel, you know, number one, super honoured to to be able to to host that q a with him and also i mean he's the heavyweight champion of the world you know like three times over and i and you know yeah respect to him big time absolutely absolutely the same yeah i've met him a few times and, and mm -hmm. massive respect for that man everything he represents outside the ring yeah exactly um, as well as obviously the boxing is amazing but everything he represents as a person i love that the hope that he gives people and yeah, yeah when i've seen yeah. you talking with him you know you just you two just gel and, uh, and it's, it's, it's a really good dynamic and, you know, it's, it's like that with some people. But, yeah, definitely a good mention there. Now, with this question, I've got to flip this one on its head now because obviously that's the best interview. And obviously we've got to get into the, the worst interview now. <laughs> I don't want to dwell on any negatives here because that's not the okay, reason I'm okay. asking. I'm hoping there's a sort of a funny story behind it or, oh. you know, something like that. Because sometimes with all the people you've spoken to, there's bound to have been um, sort of an awkward moment or something that just didn't go to plan, even if it was okay in the end. Like I say, yeah. no, no dwelling on negatives, but just anything like that that comes to mind, any funny Ooh, stories? Well. I think it's quite good if off the top of my head, I can't really think of any awkward moments or any bad interviews. Now, I'm sure there's been a lot, but obviously I, you know, I'm a very positive person. I try to, if there has been any negatives, I just blank it out of my head. But, you know, generally there's, there's not really any bad interviews or any awkward interviews. I mean, we did like a, um, were you there at the, the John Fury one which was at the Vale Sports Arena that was a couple of months ago now when everyone oh, no, um, yeah so, so no, big no, John Fury yeah it's like I'm going through the family now it's going through the family tree um, th and this wasn't a bad interview at all but this was I mean selfishly for me it didn't go quite my way because obviously it was a great event it was one of Brendan's events and I love working for Brendan he brings in like some amazing um some amazing people in into Cardiff and South Wales and stuff and um so Big John Fury was one of the first um Q and A's and nights back after everyone was allowed out pre-lockdown post-lockdown so you can imagine all of his like clientele were like from the valleys they were coming down to Cardiff there was like hundreds of minibuses coming down there was vodka on tap it was just nuts and everyone was having like such a blast you know it was so nice seeing everyone out after 18 months of just sheer hell for like some people so you know I think everyone was having such a good time we had this amazing guy John Fury who again is a bit like Tyson who's got so many great stories to tell and is such a good storyteller as well makes my job very easy I just ask him a question and away he goes you know very open honest and raw you know um you get to the underbelly of the man big time but unfortunately the crowd were having too much fun and you couldn't really have that intimate chat you wanted with him and sometimes you know and and that's fine um a bit you know in terms of what you're asking me is there any is there any that have gone wrong that wasn't a bad one by any means but I just remember thinking oh everyone's just screaming and dancing and laughing and then we've got this guy here who really wants to tell you a great story but I was like don't worry you guys have a good time so I mean that's the one thing recently that springs to my mind but you know generally I don't I can't remember there being any like nightmares which is good so but yeah it's it, sometimes it is a shame when you've got like such a good character and you know you can't quite get that intimate intimacy with with them you know yeah, very much, very much. I can relate to that. And and the crowd, Especially you know, the Welsh crowds, they're crazy, aren't they, Lee? So <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, they are 110%. Yeah. 
yeah uh, and when, you know, when the beer is flowing and all that sort of thing and yeah after after lockdown a few events were like that where i think people were just so happy to be out that it all just exactly. went crazy you can't, you can't blame them can you you know no not at all not at all <laughs> now obviously another another interview that that really sort of interests me because i mentioned this at the beginning there's a fun story behind this i know oh, you've probably yeah. talked about this one a few times with tom jones and mm-hmm. uh and you know a certain uh memento that he gave you to uh to keep mm-hmm. and you know that you know and i believe you now have framed so yeah. basically yeah. for the crowd i'm gonna i'm gonna say that that you got him to sign a pair of your knickers which i think is brilliant it's absolutely incredible but what was how did that come about i mean <laughs> that, was that sort of planned beforehand or i mean what was the, the situation with uh with how that actually came to be i can just so, picture it in my mind and yeah i mean <laughs> this was ages ago i mean the traditional thing was you know back in the day back in the 60s oh gosh was he around in the 60s 70s say you know yeah. women would throw their knickers at tom jones and and he would just have thousands of knickers all over him so I just thought you know I'm gonna I was working for a radio station um absolute radio this was about I'm gonna say about 10 years ago now maybe 2010 2011 and they asked me if I could go to I think it was like this Guinness this Guinness live event or something and I remember Razor Light were performing and then Tom Jones was performing in this little sort of Camden pub and they said you know you can go and interview him or whatever and and meet him afterwards you know for the show so I was like oh great amazing you know like obviously you know Tom Jones iconic Welsh man you know huge superstar you know known across the world so I was like right I need some memorabilia what can I do and um, I thought, yeah, I'll go and grab some of my knickers. I'll take them with me and I've got a Sharpie and he can sign them. And what happened was quite disappointingly was that he had to can the interview, but I did manage to go backstage and meet him and say, hey, I'm Polly from Absolute Radio. Can you sign my knickers? And he did. So <laughs> yeah, he was just like, yeah. I mean, he didn't really say too much, to be honest. He signed them and then that was it. And uh, and now I've got them on my wall as a bit of a memento, but I love Tom Jones. I love, I love that, he, you know, he's... Um, He's a staple of Welsh music and uh, I've got a lot of Tom Jones memorabilia in my house. Or I used to, I've just moved house and I'm, when I move into my new house, I'm going to get it all back up there. So. <laughs> yeah, that was funny enough. That was something that I actually didn't know, obviously, even though I've seen some of your uh, interviews and all these things over years and years. Mm. But when I was researching for this, I actually found a, um, I think it was Wales Online or somewhere like that about your about my house, house or possibly where you used to live and some of the incredible things that you've collected and graffiti fridges and just some and you know different music posters and I was like and there's pictures on there on the world and I was like wow that is amazing I mean is collecting something that you that you sort of enjoy doing is that you sort of gather them from your travels or um, that's like- yeah I just went through I, I think I you know it was kind of a case of like I bought my own house I saved up for years trying to buy my own house it was mine and then all of a sudden I was like right I'm good I want to turn this into some sort of like lovely little poly museum you know because um you know it's a a special thing isn't it when you buy your own house there's not a lot of people can can do it unfortunately but you know I whipped my ass off I grafted and yeah I just started putting in some cool stuff and uh, yeah, there was a sheep on the ceiling who was upside down. There was obviously Tom Jones was on my bifold doors. He was naked with um, with some Welsh budgie smugglers on. Um, and I just had loads, you know, just from like working, working in the music industry, I had like loads of different like set lists. I had, you know, gig posters, festival posters and, you know, um, some of the festivals that I was lucky enough to do the backstage interviewing for. You know, I just call up the promoter and be like, hey, can I have like one of your festival photos? Uh, festival posters and you know that's my, a memory for me then it's like oh you know interview them interview them and um you know just any quirky bits of, of bits of art I love pop art and I did start collecting um Ronnie Wood art and it's super expensive and I remember when I first got my house I was like oh my god like just paid so much money what's an extra 2k so I just like you know and I like bought it on them in you know with interest free and stuff so I bought my first Ronnie Wood art and it's amazing and I and I love it and I've got two more pieces so I guess you could say I'm a bit of an arts collector but you know it's um it's great and I, and I always wanted it because I grew up with some lovely pieces you know when I was younger and now I've got my daughter and you know she looks at all the sparkle and, and the gold glitter and all the different um you know uh, colors of, uh, that he uses and, and I love his art and I love what they stand for so you know for me it was a no-brainer and I'm so glad I got those pieces now because they'll only go up in price so <laughs> 
Incredible. There are some incredible items there. The sheep on the ceiling as well. Definitely something you don't see every day. But the mm. music stuff, uh, I love it. I think it's, it's amazing. And I, I have that similar knack. I, I pick things Thank up you. wherever I go. And, you know, I, I, I totally relate to that. But there's some cool things. Now, obviously, you mentioned motherhood there. And this is another one that I do want to touch on now. Obviously, not to sort of pry into anyone's personal life or anything like that. But you've recently become a mum, beautiful baby girl. You know, you seem to be loving your family life and really enjoying it but I think also for a lot of young mums out there who are sort of juggling their careers and, and and motherhood and things like that how are you sort of finding that at the moment you're juggling sort of this high level career being a mum and you know everything how do you how do you manage with that side of it because it's, it's a big uh, big responsibility and you know how are you finding that and this is one for all the young mums out there I think I you know, know. It's very difficult. It's very difficult, Liam. Let me tell you, it's like you're spinning plates and you're just hoping none of them fall. And some of them do fall, you know. Um, but, you know, I'm, I'm a mum first and foremost. And then, you know, my obviously, as any mum would say, your sort of career comes come ne comes next. But it was something that I had to go back to. And it's something that I have to work hard at my career because that's something that makes me me. And like I said before, you know, doing the radio, that's what makes me tick. And that's what makes me me. And without that, I wouldn't be the mother that I am to Indy. So it's important for me to, you know, go to these gigs and, and, um, and, you know, continue with my radio work. And, and you said at the beginning, Radio X based in Cardiff, that's only some of the time I have to come up to London most of the time, which is fine. And I'll do it. And it's a small sacrifice for something that I love. And, you know, as, a, as any mother would know, or any mum who's listening to this or parent even, um, or parent or carer is that, you know, you have to have a strong network around you. And I wouldn't be able to do any of this right now if it wasn't for, you know, the father of my child, he's my other half, and he's so supportive. Um, my mum and his mum, you know, um, the nans of Indy, they're just incredible. You know, I've got an incredible nursery, I've got incredible friends. And yeah, the network around me is, is just is just brilliant and obviously you know without that then everything falls out of place so you know I'm, I'm lucky and you know when I come up I'm doing a week on Radio X at the moment and I've come up to London and god I miss my girl so much but I, I know I'm doing this for the greater good for her future you know I'm as I said I'm buying you know like a, a new house with my other half and I'm doing all this work so that I can you know showcase what I can do on the radio so I can get more shifts and and get better shifts and get better show rates and and whatnot you know and um you know you've got it as I'm up here now I just want to do the best that I possibly can so yeah, incredible. It's an incredible insight. And you seem to be juggling it very, very well. Right. Uh, yeah. as on that one. But, you know, like I say, it's good inspiration <laughs> uh, to young mums out there you know, that you can mm. do both. But yeah, back and forth to London. I see, like, on your Instagram, on your Facebook, the travels and all this. And it's, yeah, you know, yeah. It's, 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 it's in, it's, yeah, it's important for mums. You know, there was part of me that wanted to take a year off when I had Indy. And I remember sort of after like three months, like it was during the pandemic. So maybe I was just a little bit bored, but it was during the pandemic. And I, I called up my boss saying, hey, can I come back? And he was like, oh, this is early. And I was like, yeah, I know. I was like, I need I need something, you know, it, this, you know, radio gives me purpose. And a lot of mums say that. And I think when you've got a bit of purpose, you lose that mum guilt a little bit. You know, I, I think that this week I, I struggled with it a bit. And I was thinking, oh, I really miss my, my girl. You know, she's growing up now and she's saying things and she's doing funny stuff. And I was like, I want to be there. But you know, on, on, on the whole, it's, um, it is a, it's a, it is a big sacrifice, but you know, you, you do it for the, for the greater good, you know? Mm, absolutely. The greater good in, in the long run. I totally understand that and respect that. And again, it's yeah. a brilliant insight into a lot of things. <laughs> now, obviously, um, this good. we're moving through some, some very good stuff here. Now, obviously we've gone back to the interview side of things. There was one other thing there with, that I wanted to touch on with sort of a little bit deeper question in a way, because obviously when you do the interviews, you have a lot of fun, you have a lot of banter with the people, really good rapport with them. I love that. What about also as well as that, the, the sort of social impact that, uh, that an interview can have, like we were saying earlier about Tyson Fury and his mental health, some of his message, some, you know, some of these people have powerful messages that they share. So it's not a really sort of narrow question of oh, what about this, but I'm just curious to sort of pick your brains on the thoughts of sort of the social impact that an interview can have if it's sort of raising awareness for a particular cause or if it's, you know, because obviously there's the fun side. Yeah, do really well, but some of them they go deeper, don't they? And, and they, they, I think they really inspire people or give people hope or have an impact on people. And obviously, the way that you're so down to earth, it, it really brings that out of some people like Tyson uh, for them mm -hmm. to share and for them to you know to give to the audience. So I know this is a bit of a funny one, it's a little out of the box. You know, I was trying to think of something out of the yeah, box yeah. <laughs> on the sort of social impact of, of interviews and yeah. what you can do in that sense. I mean, we just did an event, um, 
me and you at the uh, at the Valley Tavern a couple of weeks ago, wasn't it, with with Ricky Hatton? And I was yeah. so impressed with him because an elite former athlete, you know, top of his game, but actually he was able to hold himself on stage and do this amazing comedic comedic is that a word amazing funny comedian set for like 45 minutes had this amazing routine which was about his career in the ring out of the ring and i think a lot of people especially that audience there sort of grew up with ricky hatton or maybe he was he was the guy that people you know started watching boxing for and you know i think maybe i'm wrong and maybe there's others but um, I guess people watch boxing for him and his skill, but also they liked him for for maybe his antics out of the ring as well. And they saw a lot of themselves in him. You know, he wasn't scared to talk about, you know, maybe his demons that he was struggling with back in the day. And then obviously for it to come full circle and then for him to stand on stage and and laugh about it and then actually not really laugh about it, but talk about it and and be comfortable in sort of saying what happened to him. Um, and I think that strikes, I think that strikes so powerful with so many people, especially, you know, people who do have, have, have these mental health issues perhaps, and, and they don't want to talk about it. And it could just be listening to their, you know, hero talking about it and just shaking their hand at the end of the night. They, you know, sometimes they don't re actually Ricky Hatton was really good. You know, sometimes it, it, that goes such a long way to someone to see someone else surviving what they're going through you know um ricky hatton was really good i know there's a lot of promoters out there who who look after these boxers or these sports people and they're like right no more photos no more signing but ricky was there all night because i think he knew i think he knew how how important it was just to meet someone have a conversation with someone for five minutes you know and that can really make or break a person or just give them that extra time that they might need to sort of re recover from something so yeah you know and, and you get it more often these days and in fact people want to book people who have got a bit of a backstory who have who have been you know in a position where they've survived something in life so at, look at tyson for example ricky hatton you know um yeah absolutely yeah it's it, again it's a good insight because i think that you you really bring that out of people well even though there's a lot of fun there's a lot of bands and obviously with ricky hatton there was that joke about about you know buddies and, and the welsh phrases and, all, and there was some good yeah. stuff but at the same time we got into you know deeper things as well which i thought was brilliant and yeah, there's some really, really good figureheads out there for that sort of thing, yeah. you know, Frank Bruno as well. I mean, there's a lot of people who are... Yeah, you know, exactly. Really yeah, Frank Bruno was on the uh, telly the other day talking about it. And I think, you know, that hits a chord with everyone as well. And it's just like, there's so many people dealing with with stuff in their lives or with shit in their lives. And, and just to see these people go through it, you know, boxes of the highest order going through it and they think oh my god wow they're they're telling their story and they've survived it you know this means the world to me i i can do this as well so and that's what i love about the q a's you know they're just it, it they're just so approachable um and you know to sit in a room and, and be up close and personal with these people just can mean the world to some people going through a tough time absolutely absolutely it can Another aspect, though, which I think is because there's the last couple of things now, because we've sort of gone in depth with this, which is cool. Yeah, I uh, and I love that. I absolutely love that. But <laughs> obviously, as well as your, your interview style, though, I mean, you're very recognisable for your fashion sense as well. Very unique combinations. Very cool. Every time I see like you, the sun always... on. I'm just hiding my bad roots with the sun and with the sunglasses. That's all. <laughs> Oh, it works though it works. and you know everything like you know the necklace and every time I see you, you know you just got this sort of unique combo oh, and it's yeah. not just me though because even when I was researching this there's been other people online I know in, in one or two previous interviews you uh, I think you've mentioned this style in the city was one or I think it was or whatever mm. but you've talked about this so is that something that you sort of model yourself on a particular person or is it just totally unique to you because it seems to be totally unique like Polly is Polly and you know you just you stand up from the crowd in, in all the right ways I really mean that as a compliment oh, but um cool. it, it, what where does that inspiration come from for anyone out there that loves fashion and sort of admires that side of um of your presentation yeah honestly it's just for me and a lot of people do say you know oh you've you're just kind of a bit one of a kind when it comes to fashion but on, honestly I just I just wear what I'm comfortable in and you know when I'm not dressing it because it's the worst thing in the world for me to dress up I hate dressing up I hate putting on makeup I hate doing my hair like I genuinely hate it I would love to go through life in a pair of joggers and a band tee every single day throw me a pair of vans and I'm done you know um you know I just honestly I just like what I like I just like to be really comfy and I'm I suppose even 
the comfy stuff and and the you know the joggers and the t-shirts i i just make it my own really and i'm comfortable in that and i'm you know i'm i'm happy in that so it's it's yeah it's a funny one for me to sort of um to grasp really because i i would never ever call myself any sort of like fashion icon or trailblazer at all i love my tie-dye obviously i've got my little tie-dye business on the side which i do for for kids and you know i dress my indie up in tie-dye as much as possible but you know it's real sort of um beach bum chic i call it i i just you know pair of flip-flops as well or just an oversized t-shirt that's me every day of the week i'd love it so <laughs> in fact i'm doing i'm doing stuff at the moment for um plug sky sports darts um and and i have to wear something a little bit more respectable you know a little bit presentable and i'm going through the shops thinking i can't find anything and i just wish i could wear a pair of joggers but obviously i can't so yeah it's been difficult for me and it's funny and also you know going back to being a mum sorry i'm waffling now but in terms of fashion and trying to find stuff i don't know whether it's just me coming out of lockdown and me becoming a mum during lockdown but i feel you know i've come back into this new world being a mother and just i just i'm trying i'm i'm in a crossroads at a moment at the moment with fashion and i'm just can't like find my find my vibes so i don't know we'll see <laughs> it's very chill uh, yeah very chill very chill very like i say very yeah unique. and it just it just works you know even if it's your casual you're comfortable whatever <laughs> It just works, you know, and it's yeah, not yeah, 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 and yeah. a lot of it's personality though, as well as as well as look. I think but, so. you know, I think we, that's really important, yeah. you know, personality within your fashion, you know, that says a that says a lot about your fashion choices as well, hundred percent. Yeah. Brilliant. So the last couple of things then, because like I say, we have gone in depth. So the last two yeah, things sure. I think is obviously um you're in a position you mentioned about this privileged position interviewing these amazing people doing everything you do and the success that you've had i know there's a lot more to come but it's a great position to give advice to people who want to break into the industry so that's basically the question is you know if there's people who want to break into radio they want to break into presenting they want to be sort of up there you know doing the things that you do i know you got into it in this random way but being you know so many years in the industry you've learned so much i'd imagine from it so what would be some advice if there's any people watching this now who, you know they want to break into your into the industry any age it doesn't really matter but what would be sort of two or three you know key ingredients for them that they need to succeed you know i know this is probably a big one yeah no i always say that you know obviously it's changed so much since you know i got into it but you know i'm always a big advocate on creating your own opportunities and there's so many different platforms that you can do that on these days and i mean everyone has got their own platform you know look at you for example you've gone out there you've used your own initiative and you've 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 created your own podcast or you, you know your own interview platform and you put it out there which is amazing and i think you know if someone did want to be an interviewer if someone did want to be a presenter then do exactly that and or jump on youtube or you know i, I did a um a podcast the other day and um that's John. Johnny Vaughan's there. I'm just doing a little, uh, a little chat. <laughs> Baby. <laughs> he's nuts. Johnny Vaughan is nuts, but he's lovely. Sorry. Um, he thinks I'm talking to my baby. I'll go in and see him in a minute. Um, yeah, sorry. No, I was saying, you know, like, say if you wanted to be a sports presenter, um, turning up and go into these uh, games and matches or whatever you know get a, a press pass you know the, the the press and marketing people are more than accommodating and and you know you you rock up and, and you take some film and you can try and interview some of the players or some of the staff and just getting something out on your platform everyone's got one as i say you've got facebook you can make a twitter um so i think i think that's one of my my key ingredients as you say to sort of getting on and getting seen you know and it's a perfect place to, to showcase your talents and and what you can do mm. yeah incredible i think initiative is is massive and i mean these days we've Hopefully. got so many resources you know that, that we can use uh well like you say with everyone has an outlet with the social media and all of these things it's, it's it's really good advice but as i say you're in that prime position to give that advice so it's again it's inspiration something i'm very passionate about so yeah. really the last thing i mean i obviously i did have a question about the future plans and everything but you sort of talked touched on that earlier about you yeah know, the future and all that so the last one really is just a shout out obviously to your listeners to your fans your supporters and if any of them are watching this listening to this you know the people that sort of loyally follow you and probably have them for years and years what would you say to them what would you sort of your words be um for any of them watching this or listening to this at all i mean 
just thank you and I, I and I always say you know like the the Welsh people who support me and have done on my journey since day dot gosh I mean however many years ago um it's always nice because the Welsh always back their own and they they always you know um they're always very proud of of their people and and they push them and they showcase them and you know um so but just thank you and just thank you for supporting and you know one comment means so much um we're just you know presenters like me and you know if you ever see me hosting i'm just i'm just a normal gal and just come on over and just have a chat with me and you know and um, message me on instagram or twitter and, and and i'll always say hi and i'll always have a chat you know it's no bother to me at all you know i like meeting people um so yeah but just yeah let you know hopefully i get to meet more of you soon and you know we're all opening back up again and it's it's nice to go out there and see people and it's nice as well actually when people relay stuff that they've heard you say on on online and you know compliments are great you know you always get that one bad egg who's always a little bit nasty but you know it's all good so they don't know you do they so that's social media world for you at the moment isn't it yeah it is it is but it's good to give a shout out to the you know the good fans because obviously you know these things are nothing without them the radio the listeners and i don't i don't think i've got fans by the way maybe just a couple of listeners who like you know follow the know. journey <laughs> i don't know i don't know i think i think you've got a good following you know i always always and i know obviously it's not just you because obviously with video x there's a great team behind it there's some really talented presenters so i know it's not Obviously, it's not just you with any of these things, and obviously with your previous um, radio broadcast as well. But yeah, I, I definitely think you've got you've got fans and, and followers. But hey, that's that's just mm. that's just my view. But anyway, Polly, we've talked about some absolutely cracking stuff here. We've gone in depth into it. So obviously, the last thing for me to do is once again just say a big thank you for making the time, and uh, I, you know I really appreciate it. All right, Pleasure. so thank I won't get you. Much. It's been really enjoyable. <laughs> yeah, I, I've enjoyed it too. It's been fun, which is which is what I hope for. Thank you very much for watching. Um, please subscribe to the Simply Inspired YouTube channel and there'll be more videos coming soon.